Hello everyone, myself Dr. Meenu, Associate Professor, CSC Department, K.R. Mangalam University. In this lecture, I would introduce you to the Python programming language. The topics covered in the language would be Python introduction, various features of Python programming language, why we need Python language. We also discuss about the Python virtual machine and how the Python program will be executed using Python interpreter. Python is developed by Gudo Van Rossum. He started implementing Python in 1989 and the formal version of the language was released in 1991. Python is a very simple programming language so, even if you are new to the programming, you can learn Python without facing any issues. Python is a general purpose language. It is interpreted, interactive, and object-oriented programming language. General purpose means that you can use Python to write code for any programming task. Python is now used for developing various applications like it is being used in search engine widely, in mission criti critical projects, and in web development, etc. We say that Python is an interpreted language. This means the source code of a Python program is converted into bytecode and then it is executed by Python virtual machine. Python is also an object oriented programming language because it has all the properties of an object oriented programming. It has classes, encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance, abstraction, etc. which makes it a pro object oriented language. We will be discussing about these ori object oriented features in further lectures in very much detail. Now we will see why Python is in so much of demand nowadays. Python is open source which means it is available free of cost. Python works on different platform like we can use Python on Windows, on Mac, Linux operating system. Python has a simple syntax similar to the English language, so it is very easy to understand. Python allows the developer to write programs with the fewer lines of code as compared to the other programming languages which you must have learned earlier. Python runs on an interpreter system. That means code can be executed as soon as it is written. That means the prototyping will be very quick when you use Python programming. Now we will see various features of Python programming language. Python provides many useful features which make it popular and valuable from other programming languages. We have listed here a few essential features of Python. First is easy to learn and use. Python is very easy to learn as compared to other programming languages. Its syntax is straightforward and much the same like the English language. Secondly, it is an expressive language. That means Python can perform complex tasks using few lines of code. For example, to print hello world, you simply need to type print and hello world in the brackets. It will take only one line to execute the code. Whereas in Java and C, it takes multiple line to print simple hello world. Thirdly, it is an interpreted language. Python is an interpreted language because it executes the code one line at a time. The advantage of being interpreted is that it makes debugging very easy 
and it makes the code portable. Next is cross-platform language. Python can run equally on different platforms such as Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac operating system, etc. So we can say that Python is a portable language. Next is free and open source. Python is freely available to everyone. It is freely available on its official website. The term open source means Python can download and be used without paying any money to the user. Next is object-oriented language. As already discussed, Python supports inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, abstraction, etc. That makes it an object-oriented language. Next is extensible. We say that Python is an extensible language. We can integrate Python code into C or C++ language, and then we can compile the code in C and C++ itself. Next is large standard library. Python provides a vast range of libraries for various activities. There are various libraries available in the Python, such as TensorFlow, Pandas, NumPy, Keras, and PyTorch, etc. Next is GUI programming support. Python provides GUI support for developing desktop application using the libraries tkinter and kiwi. There are other libraries available also for the same. Then next is dynamic memory allocation in Python. That means we don't need to specify the data type of a variable. When we assign some value to the variable, it automatically allocates the memory to the variable at runtime. So these were some of the features of Python programming. Now, launching Python. Once Python is installed on your PC, we can start executing the Python programs or statements by typing the Python at command prompt or by using IDLE. IDLE is nothing but an integrated development environment for Python. Using IDL, we can create, open, save, edit, and run the Python program in IDL. Once Python starts, we will see the symbol of three, this symbol we will see on the screen. This means this represents the Python statement, Python prompt. So we can use both the command line interpreter and the idle for executing the Python program. Now we will see practically how can we open the idle and how can we run the program using the command line interpreter. So for that, I have to exit from the PPT. Now, in the start button, we can simply type IDLE. So you can see the idle on this PC, the Python interpreter version 3.11 for 64-bit is already installed. You just have to click this. So we will be opening with the idle shell. You can see this is the idle shell running on my screen. Now simply uh, this, this symbol, which you can see here, this greater than symbol, three greater than symbol, this represents the Python prompt. Now, if I'll type simply print hello world, double quotes, close, semi bracket close, you will see that here I have written the command print in the brackets in double quotes, hello world. We just have to put enter and it will show you the output hello world. So this is the idle shell. 
this idol uh, works in two modes, one in the script mode and the another is an interactive mode. So interactive mode means we are typing the statements here in the, in the idol shell. Just press the enter and you will get the output. For example, if I say, if I write A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3, then I want to add these numbers. I would say C is equal to A plus B. Press enter and then I want to print the value of this variable C. So here you will receive the output that the sum of A and B is stored into the C and we are printing that C variable here and it will show the result as so soon as you will press enter button. Then now we will see some basic components of Python programming language. For that we have to go back to the PPT again and now we will see Okay, the second thing is how to run the Python program using the command prompt. Now we will see how to execute the program using the command prompt. For that, we have to type the cmd here in the start, press enter, the command prompt will open. Here we have to simply type Python to come to the Python prompt. So see here we can't see the Python prompt. So that means we have to set the path for this. For setting the path, what we have to do is, what we need to do is, I have to, I have to check. I've copied the Python path wherever the Python is installed on your PC. Go to the environment settings of your computer. You can see here advanced system settings. In advanced system settings, the system properties pop up comes out. Here we have a tab environment variable. In the environment variable, we have user variable and system variable. So in the system variable, we have to go to the new we simply have to type variable name as path and I am just copying the path where the Python is installed on my PC. Press OK, OK, OK. Now uh, I am closing all the windows here and now again opening the command prompt. Here again I am typing Python. Okay. We have to type Python in the command prompt and you will see the Python statement prompt will appear here. Now again the same thing, you can run the command here. I am simply typing hi, close the bracket, enter. So it will show you the output, hi. So in the same way, we can type the commands and then we can press enter. So as soon as you will finish your typing and enter the uh, press the enter button, you will get the output. Now we will see how we will be running our programs here using the idle shell only. So I'm opening the idle shell again. So uh, we can also execute the program in the script mode. That means if you have more than one line or you have set of statements which you execute in one go, then we have to create a file. So go to file, go to new file, write your code here. We simply have to, for example, I am writing here, print hello world. That's it. This is what I want to uh, execute. I'm just showing you the process, how to execute the file in the script mode. So we have to save the file, go to save as. We have to save the file here, for example, with the name test. This is already a Python file. Or you can also type here the extension test.py. py is the Python extension. 
save the program. The program is, say, is being saved at this path, which you can see in the title bar. This is the default path where every program is being saved. So what we have to do to, in order to execute, in order to run the program, go to the run, run module. OK, there is some error. So you need to put the double quotes here in the start. Control S, you have to save the file. Go to run, run module, and see. In the shell, you can see how your program has been executed. You can see the output here as hello world. In the same way, in the file, you can write your program. And using run button, you can execute your code. So this is how we can execute the Python statements and code using the idle shell and command prompt. So this is what is being shown in this picture. The first image is of command prompt, and the second image is of idle shell. So this is what I have already told you. Now we will discuss about Python virtual machine. This is also known as PVM. PVM is a software program which provides programming environment. The role of PVM is to convert the bytecode instruction into the machine code so that the computer can execute those machine instructions and generate the output. Interpreter converts bytecode into machine code and sends that machine code to the computer processor for execution. In this diagram, I'll explain you the step-by-step -step process of executing a Python program. So this is the Python file. This is the .py file which we have created using the idle. So this is our source code program. Then this source code program, you will save this program with some name, for example, test.py. This will be the input for the compiler. The Python compiler will pick this test.py file and convert this code into a bytecode which is an intermediate file and this is being stored with this particular extension. For example, the name of my file is test.pyc. pyc is Python bytecode. The interpreter or the Python virtual machine will take this pyc file, interpret line by line and generate the machine code corresponding to the byte code. Now once the byte code, once the machine code has been generated for our program, the computer processor will execute the machine code and generate the output which you can see in the console window. So this was the process of step by step executing a Python program. Now we will discuss about some basic components of Python. A thorough understanding of the basic components of programming language is vital in the development of the code. So some of the basic components are, as specified in the PPT, are values and types. So when we write one, two, and hello world, these are nothing but the values, right? If I want to see that what is the data type associated with these values. So what we can do is we can simply write this command type and you specify the value. If it is a string, you specify in single quote, otherwise you can write it directly. So this type string, this is the output of this command. That means hello world is a string. The data type associated with the hello world is string. It is of string data type. Now, if I write type 
in the brackets 17. 17 is a whole number. So the data type associated with this value is integer. So this would be the output that you will receive here. If I type the decimal value, type 3.2, you will receive the output as type float. That means this is a float value. So variable and data types. What are variables in a programming language? Variables are the most powerful features of any programming language. With the help of the variable, we can manipulate the values of those variables. So every variable has an identity, has a type and a value. Identity is nothing but the address of that variable which is stored into the memory. Type, type is a set of values and allowable operations on those values. And value, an assignment statement that creates new variable and gives them values. For example, if I type m is equal to 10. So this is a Python statement, m is a variable name. So this is the ID of my variable. This is the value of that variable. And type is the data type, right? The data type of this variable is integer. So as you can see in the example message and some string in the single quote. So message is a variable name. This is a value and with the assignment operation, we are assigning the value to a variable. This is an integer assignment, n is equal to 17 and this is a floating point assignment, pi is equal to 3.14 and so on. Now we will see how you can write the variable names and what are the keywords in Python programming language. So variables, whatever name you are giving to the variable, they should be short, they should be meaningful, right? And you can write the more descriptive name also. You can give the name to a variable like x is equal to 5, y is equal to 10, Right, you can also write like uh, the example has been given here that age is equal to, this is more descriptive name, age is equal to 10, car name, right, and total underscore volume. All these are the variable name. They can be the short variable name or they can be more descriptive, right. Then, I will tell you certain rules for writing the variable names in Python. So a variable name must start with a letter or the underscore character. The variable name always start with a character like the example I have given you earlier or it can also start with an underscore like for example I can write underscore age is equal to 15. This is also a valid variable name. A variable name cannot start with a number. That means you cannot write one underscore age or you cannot write one age. These are wrong variable names. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscore. So the, you can write variable names starting with the character, any character from A to Z, small, capital A to Z, any number from 0 to 9, or it can start with a underscore. Variable names are case sensitive. That means if you are writing a variable name, age in small, and the another age with A capital, so these are two different variables. They are not same. When I write A is equal to 10, and when I'm writing A is equal to 10, 
these are two different values for the compiler and the interpreter in Python. So these are the examples of some legal variable names and illegal variable names. My var is equal to John. So remember, we always uh, give the string values in the double quotes or in single quote. If you write my var is equal to in single quote John, this would also be correct. My underscore var John, this is a legal name. Underscore my underscore var is equal to the value. This is also a legal name, my var. So all these are the legal variable names in Python. They are either starting with a character or with the underscore. Now below you can see the variable names which are illegal. My var is equal to John my underscore var is equal to john sorry my hyphen var this is illegal name you cannot write this special character hyphen my un, my space var you cannot give white spaces between the variable names so these are example of some illegal variable names these are some of the keywords which have already been defined by the Python compiler. So what are keywords? Keywords are used to give some special meaning to the interpreter and are used by Python interpreter to recognize them. So uh, these are built in. We can't change the meaning of these, these, these keywords and we cannot use these keywords as a variable name, as a function name, or as any other entity in the program. We have to use in the same manner as it is defined uh, by the interpreter or by the programming environment. So some of the keywords you must have already, uh, you know, gone through in, the, in some other programming languages like while, if, for, break, else, not, class, continue, break. These are some of the common keywords which we have already studied in C, C++, or Java. Python has specified some more keywords, as you can see, delete, as, with, pass. These are, uh, the, th this is the list of, you know, the, the keywords by compiler 3.7. So every time we get the new version of the compiler, we, we may have some added keyword in that interpreter. So that's all from, uh, so that's all for today. Thank you so much. We will learn about different data types. We will also see uh, the programs, control structures, looping in the further lectures. Thank you so much. Thank you.